This episode is brought to you by our Patreon supporters. We've paid a lot of attention to Russian tanks since the beginning of the war, but not as much to their Ukrainian equivalents. As a successor state to the Soviet Union, Ukraine's regular army, not including territorial defense, also has a tank-heavy force structure similar to their adversary. However, there are key differences both with the tank models they field and unit organization. In this episode, we're going to give you a brief overview of the tank models Ukraine currently fields and the doctrinal structure of their armored units from the platoon to brigade level. First, the tanks. We'll be starting off with the models that Ukraine fielded before the war began. These can be categorized into three tank families, the T-64, T-72, and T-80. If any one tank could be considered Ukraine's main tank, it'd be the T-64BV and the upgraded T-64BV Model 2017, which it fielded over 600 of before the war. Except for Separatist T-64s captured during the Donbass War, Russia doesn't field this model. The T-64BV is a mid-1980s upgrade of the 1970s T-64B, with slightly improved hull armor and explosive reactive armor. The T-64BV 2017, meanwhile, is a direct upgrade of the BV, with a gunner's thermal sight, new explosive reactive armor, and GPS. A smaller number of T-64BM bullets are also fielded, which is an early 2000s modernization of the T-64. Production of the bullet had actually been discontinued in favor of the T-64BV 2017. The first tank brigade, which famously held out at Cherniev, originally fielded the Bulat, but they took heavy losses during the initial war in the Donbass and required a significant amount of factory repairs. In 2017, the brigade's Bulats were transferred to the 4th Tank Brigade, a part of Ukraine's operational reserve supplemented by a mix of T-72s and T-64BVs. A more niche model to round out the T-64 line is the T-64B1M, which was intended as a cheaper modernization of the T-64B for export. Fifty of these tanks were actually bound for the Democratic Republic of Congo in the mid-2010s, but faced with the challenges of the Donbass War in 2014, ten of these tanks were diverted to the National Guard, Ukraine's internal troops. Before the war started, the infamous Azov Regiment operated a company of B1Ms. In addition to T-64s, the Ukrainian Ground Forces and National Guard also feel the variants of the T-72, taken out of storage to cope with the war in Donbass. These are mostly T-72AVs and T-72B1s, which are Cold War T-72s from the mid-1980s. These tanks are spread around, particularly in the Western Mountain Formations, Motorized Brigades, and the National Guard. But, the Ukrainians also fielded a battalion of the modernized T-72 AMTs in the 24th Mechanized Brigade, which, among other incremental improvements, includes newer Nage explosive reactive armor like the T-64BV 2017, newer night sights, and an upgraded engine. Somewhat detached from the T-64s and T-72s is the T-80, specifically the T-80BV, which is a mid-1980s variant with Contact-1 ERA. Unlike the former two families, the T-80 is not fielded by the General Army or National Guard, or at least they weren't before the war. Not including battlefield captures, they're exclusively used by the air assault forces and naval infantry, and Russia also fields this specific model. Ukraine doesn't actively field the T-80UD, but it has upgraded about a platoon's worth into the T-84U Oplot standard. This model has upgraded protection and a newer engine, thermal sights, a laser rangefinder, GPS, and other upgrades. It's unclear where this tank is as it was mainly a show tank for parades and events, but during the 2018 exercise Combined Resolve 10 in Germany, a T-84U platoon was being operated by the 14th Mechanized Brigade. In addition to these pre-war models, Ukraine has increased the diversity of its tanks through captures and foreign aid. There is the obvious meme of Ukraine yoinking Russian tanks, but it's hard to actually gauge how many are actually being put into operational service. Just because a photo of an intact Russian tank is taken, doesn't mean it'll end up fighting in a Ukrainian tank company. There's a multitude of things that could happen to that captured tank. They could be destroyed if the unit doesn't have the recovery assets or expertise to take them, or they could be stripped for parts, which can help the Ukrainians keep the tanks they already have maintained even if it's not adding a whole new tank. In some instances, the Russians have actually captured back tanks that the Ukrainians captured from them originally. 
Probably the most public example of Russian tanks in Ukrainian service is with the 93rd Mechanized Brigade, which engaged the Russian 200th Motor Rifle Brigade near Kharkiv earlier in the war. They're now fielding the T-80BV, BVM, and U captured from the 200th Brigade and the 4th Guards Tank Division west of Kharkiv. The Ukrainians didn't field the T-80BVM or T-80U before the war. The T-80U was essentially a comprehensive mid-80s upgrade of the T-80 platform, while the BV was more incremental. The BVM, meanwhile, is the mid-2010s Russian modernization. There have also been videos of Ukrainians actively using captured T-72B3s as well. Probably more significant than captures, though, are the T-72M1 tanks Ukraine started receiving from Poland, the Czech Republic, and Bulgaria. Poland pretty much dumped all of its serviceable T-72s on Ukraine, which comes out to about 230 tanks. About 100 of these are being used to fill out the reserve 5th Tank Brigade, supported by infantry mounted on the Dutch YPR-765 armored personnel carriers. The Czech Republic also donated about 40 T-72M1s. Now, these tanks aren't that great. The base T-72M1 is an early 80s export model derived from the T-72A, but a portion of the tanks Poland donated were upgraded T-72M1Rs, which features a new fire control system, thermal sights, and other qualitative upgrades. The Ukrainians are also fitting explosive reactive armor to at least some of them. In Ukraine's regular army, these tanks are in most maneuver brigades. Pre-war, Ukraine's two active tank brigades and four reserve tank brigades would theoretically each have three tank battalions. They also had the 12th separate tank battalion stationed near the 1st tank brigade. Their nine active and two reserve mechanized brigades, their primary infantry mounted on BMPs and BTRs, would each be supported by a tank battalion. The two western mountain assault brigades also had a tank battalion each. And the four lighter motorized infantry brigades have also had a tank company each since 2015. Pre-war, most of these units would be equipped with T-64BVs, but the T-72 started filtering in through the 2010s, particularly in the West, and of course now with foreign aid. Separate from the Army, Ukraine's five air assault brigades and one airborne brigade each have a tank company. And in the naval infantry, their two brigades each have a tank battalion. Outside the military, the Ukrainian National Guard also operates a tank fleet. These aren't like the American National Guard, but more a paramilitary that mixes law enforcement and domestic security functions with military capabilities. At least the 4th Rapid Reaction Brigade, which took part in the Battle of Antonov Airport and was trained with NATO standards in mind, had a tank battalion. And the Azov Regiment and 9th Operational Regiment each had a tank company. Now onto the organization of the Army Tank Battalion. Note that as losses are taken, new units are created or merged together and task organized, things inevitably shift away from the ideal. The Ukrainians have lost at least one-fifth of their T-64BVs according to Oryx and likely more, so take this doctrinal example with a grain of salt. At its base, the battalion starts with the main battle tank. All tank models currently operated by the Ukrainians are auto-loaded, so they each have three crew members. The tank commander, gunner, and driver. Ukrainian platoons consist of four tanks, different from the Russians who field three tank platoons. Four tank platoons have some advantages, like being better able to absorb casualties, or having two elements that can mutually support each other's movement and be split to support infantry units in restricted terrain. It's commonly claimed that this was to bring Ukrainian units in line with NATO standards, but I haven't actually been able to find a source that confirms this. The Soviets actually ran four tanks per platoon as late as the 1980s in their motor rifle regiments. Basically, the four tank platoons were an infantry-centric units, while tank regiments ran three tank platoons. However, the Soviets standardized on three tank platoons entirely in the late 80s. Ukrainian unit organization documents as early as 2004 reference four tank platoons, so it's unclear to me whether it was NATO influence or if the Ukrainians came to the conclusion themselves. Three tanks grouped together make a tank company. They're led by a small company headquarters with one tank for the company commander and their crew. There are also three other personnel, the deputy commander for education, senior technician, and a company sergeant major. A vehicle isn't earmarked for them specifically in the company, but they probably either have one detailed for them or they ride with the battalion trains since they're more administrative type personnel. 
three companies together form the close combat element of a tank battalion. The battalion HQ also includes a command tank for the battalion commander, making 40 tanks per battalion. They're supported by a reconnaissance platoon with one BRM-1K recon vehicle and two BMP-2 infantry fighting vehicles, an anti-aircraft missile platoon with nine Igla man pads and three BMPs, an engineering platoon with an MTU bridge layer, signals platoon, battalion and medical station with four ambulances, and a support company with a technical support platoon and material support platoon. The support company is equivalent in size to a Russian tank battalion's material support platoon with a slightly larger feeding section. Other than about 14 trucks and some maintenance vehicles, the unit has one armored recovery vehicle. When part of a tank brigade, a tank battalion could expect to be reinforced by one mechanized infantry company on BMPs, similar to Russian practice. The self-propelled howitzer component of a brigade artillery group is also meant to directly support first echelon battalions. There's a host of other combat support elements of the brigade level that could either directly or indirectly reinforce tank battalions. A tank brigade generally has three tank battalions supported by one mechanized infantry battalion. A brigade artillery group with two self-propelled artillery battalions and one rocket artillery battalion. An anti-aircraft missile battalion. Recon and sniper companies. Engineer, maintenance and material support battalions. Electronic Warfare, Signals, Radar, NBC Defense, and Medical Companies, and a Commandant's Platoon for Headquarters Security. All in all, pretty similar to a Russian Brigade. I'd like to thank our patrons for protecting Battle Order from the whims of the advertisers. Ukraine content isn't exactly the safest, so consider joining them over at our Patreon link in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, check out this look at Russia's equivalent tank force structure. We'll see you over there.